Welcome to Chris's Storytelling Corner. My name is Christopher Moldong, and I am an author. I've been reading some of my short stories and doing manga reviews and reading even parts of uh, some of my books. But I really like stories in general from all types of platforms, whether it's comic books, manga, anime, movies, books, television, etc. Uh, character, plot, setting, and other literary devices all interest me. So, with that said, today I'm going to list my five favorite female protagonists from Studio Ghibli Films. Uh, you can check out my author's website at www.chrismaldong.com. You can buy my first novel, a fantasy adventure called The Mustard Prince and the Convent Kingdom for $4.99. Also for $2.99, you can buy my short story collection, a collection of 10 short stories in the horror, fantasy, and realistic fiction genres. Um, just a, a lot of my stories, including The Mustard Prince, are greatly influenced by various anime and manga. <laughs> um, you can check out my Twitter page and author's Facebook page. Uh, links to all these will be provided on the description. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel if you're on YouTube, or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on SoundCloud. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. So, these lists I'll try and make them a weekly thing. Um, some weeks, uh, hopefully, some weeks I, I, I might miss because I, I have other uh, podcasts to work on. But for now, we'll try and make this a weekly thing. And uh, let's get started. So, we got the top five Studio Ghibli female protagonist. And um, just to tell you, I haven't seen every Studio Ghibli film. I've seen a good amount of them. So obviously uh, some characters that you might feel would be good additions on this list might not be on here. Um, there's others that I was like, ah, I kind of like this character, you know, like the main character from like Spirited Away, but I, I don't know. I wouldn't say she's like a favorite of mine. And, um, yeah, so, yeah, you know, but, you know, feel free to, uh, leave a comment if you feel that, uh, I, I miss any of these characters. So, in no particular order, I mean, it's like my top five, but I can't really rank him per se, but, uh, let's go start with Kiki from Kiki's Delivery Service. So, Kiki, her goal was to be a witch. Uh, she is extremely adventurous and actually makes her own witch delivery business. Uh, she goes around flying on a broom, uh, meets someone that is also interested in her and interested in flying as well. Uh, she's also someone that has overcome some level of uh, adversity. Uh, she actually loses her ability to understand her familiar, uh, loses her ability to, to fly, if I'm not mistaken. But eventually, by the end, she gets it back. And, you know, at the end of her, like, journey or whatnot, she pretty much says and writes to, writes to home that she's pretty happy. So, I've always liked Kiki. Just, I, I've always enjoyed the you know adventurous naive will kind of get into things type of character and that's kind of why i like her uh next one arietti once again going back to the adventurous uh character uh she's from the secret world of arietti uh one thing i like about arietti too is she is extremely resourceful you know uh, she's the type of character that will use, she's a 14 year old, uh, borrower and she'll use things like a pin as a sword or, or a spoon to drive off insects. 
she's also very open-minded she re befriends a human uh, by the name of Sho or Sean as they call him and is pretty much and he's re like really sick but she's like with him uh, throughout the movie pretty much uh, she also seems to want to get away from I guess tradition of not really contacting humans or like a different race or species and wants to seemingly open lines of communication with humans and not just be so secretive around them so Arietti, like I said, I like her resourcefulness, her open-mindedness, and this will be a theme with pretty much every character here, but like, just, well, she's really courageous, but also just being how, uh, how adventurous she is. Uh, third one on the list, Princess Kaguya from The Tale of Princess Kaguya. I saw this movie in the theaters, it was just beautiful. Um, certain things about Kaguya that I like is that she it doesn't look down upon the world she doesn't look down upon people or earth she actually didn't want to leave earth <laughs> by the end of the movie um, she pretty much just had a, an attachment to earth and really didn't want to leave she didn't even want her like they they put something on her to make her lose her memory. She didn't want to really do that. You know, she views life as a way, as something that should be full of laughter, but also struggle. Um, she seems to love her family from Earth, too. You know, a lot of the, a lot of what she acts upon seems to be to please them, you know? And it's kind of sad, though, because in a sense, like, she didn't really want to leave the small village uh, and, and just become this princess like empress <laughs> or like this you know obviously uh, princess of royalty and she pretty much did not like you know taking these type of like training to be like royalty and like and whatnot like she didn't really care about that. Her parents, especially her father, seemed to have cared about that a lot. But, um, yeah, at one point she even goes back to her village and obviously misses it. Uh, the other thing that I like about Princess Kage is just how clever she is. Uh, especially when she doesn't really want to be, like, betrothed to any of these princes. But, so she tells them to get these impossible items. Uh, one thing that happens, though, is one of the princes actually gets himself killed trying to get said item. And, you know, Princess Kaya, despite being from, like, the moon, <laughs> is very remorseful and actually gets into the, a depression because of that. So um, she's very caring. That's one thing I, I'm really high on with uh, Princess Kaya. Um, she, you know, despite being like a celestial being, <laughs> doesn't look down upon these, you know, terrestrial beings and actually finds a lot of like happiness with the people and with Earth itself. Obviously, when the Emperor tries to like pretty much see her and touches her, you know, that she didn't really like that, obviously. But for the most part, um, she really didn't look down uh, upon people, despite, you know, everything. Like, her being pretty much a princess, having suitors, and, and whatnot. Uh, fourth on list, Princess Mononoke-san. From Princess Mononoke, or called Mononoke Hime. So, one, I actually rewatched this. There's a Fathom Events, cost twenty five bucks, <laughs> and I rewatched it. I saw it. It was an Eng it was an English dub. Um, still good. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen the movie in a long time, so 
when I see her introducing herself or or she gets introduced to us and a Ashitaka by you know sucking blood from a giant wolf and spitting it out and it's just her, her, her whole mouth is just covered in blood and she just looks at Ashitaka slash the audience and they're just like wow that is one of the most iconic scenes that I can think of uh, in any Studio Ghibli film uh, of just her introduction. Princess Mononoke-san is so powerful, <laughs> you know. Uh, she'll go on rooftops, try to kill the Lady Eboshi <laughs> because Lady Eboshi is trying to get the iron out from her mountain. Um, so she will go to danger head first. And that's why I really like her too because um, one thing she also did was assist the boars. She didn't have to do that, but she's like, oh no, I'm gonna do that, you know. She'll all, you know, she'll also just fight like the leader of the Iron Town head on, <laughs> you know, even though the numbers advantage is insane. Uh, one thing about her though is she keeps denying being human. It, it's a very strange thing. I get it. She she's raised by wolves, but and, and raised in the forest. But the fact of the matter is, she's human. I mean, I, I, I don't really know, you know, unlike some, you know, maybe like a Princess Kaguya or something like that, she detests humans. Uh, obviously, they haven't done her much good and has pretty much caused nothing but, you know, trouble and conflict for like, the forest and the creatures of the forest but uh, you know you can't she kind of denies what she is and, and also she seems to love Ashi I mean Ashitaka loves her she seems to love him too at the end of the movie though they don't really resolve I mean I kind of wish they resolved that love story it was kind of like oh yeah Ashitaka's like well I'll still be in Iron Town. You'll be in the forest, so we'll be near each other. But it's like, ah, you know, it's they never really resolved that. But like, she denies being human, so I guess they can't really take it. Uh, the relationship, as far as um, I would have liked it. And finally, uh, this is actually my number one. As far as top five uh, Studio Ghibli female protagonist, Nausicaa. Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Um, what can I say about Nausicaa? She's an expert with a glider. She'll go into danger head first. She, if an Omu comes out, she will, she knows how to calm it down and speak to the insects. She doesn't want to kill these insects despite the fact that they lived in like this poisoned jungle and, and whatnot and she's also really powerful too you know she definitely cares for others when the uh, Tomekian soldiers come into Yupa's room she comes in kills a bunch of those soldiers until Yupa intervenes so she can fight She'll go headfirst into danger, and she will also risk her own life for the betterment of everyone, not just her own people, but like the insects as well. Uh, case in point, she'll go when a baby Omu gets captured and is being hung off a, uh, I believe it's a balloon. I mean, she is the first, you know, she is the only one that will get the glider, get shot at, and she does get shot, <laughs> save the Omu, still go to the rampaging adult Omu, <laughs> and try and save everyone. So, Nazca has always been one of my favorites. Um, 
headstrong, caring for others, adventurous. Can she can fight too? And um, you know, willing to risk her own life to do what's right. So yeah, that's why uh, Nazika is my number one pick for uh, favorite uh, Ghibli Studio Ghibli female protagonist. So that's all for today. Uh, if you think I missed any characters or have something to say, uh, leave a comment below. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel if you're on YouTube, or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on SoundCloud. Uh, if you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. Uh, thank you for listening to this list. Uh, I'll have more uh, for you, and it won't just be anime-related. Maybe it'll be lists of certain things with manga, certain things with movies, certain things with television, uh, certain things with comic books. And the next one, I already have it planned out. Next week, I will have a list of the five most cocky male characters of the Marvel C Cinematic Universe. So that does not include DC or uh, Image Comics, I guess, <laughs> if you want to go there too, or any other type of comics. doesn't include anime manga or anything like that just male characters cocky male characters of the marvel cinematic universe so thank you and until next time